G'day throttlers, now we're out here at Penrith Motorcycle Centre and just about to do the recce run for the Black Dog ride coming up in March. And James from uh, Penrith Motorcycle Centre said, well why don't you take the Z900 RS on the recce run and, um, and do a review on the way, so that's what we're doing. Now I've already done the Z900 RS Cafe and I'll put the little link up here at the top of the screen and in the description below of that video. Essentially this bike is the same power plant but just in a different physical structure so a more upright seating position um, nice two-up seat very comfortable and uh, and other than that um, all of its mechanics and its braking is all pretty much the same as the Z900 RS cafe anyway let's take it for a spin see what it's like and in fact this is the one that I've been really excited to be able to review so um, it's gonna be a fun morning Okay, a quick little walk around of the Kawasaki Z900 RS. All right, now these pipes have been custom designed for maximum sound, maximum quality of sound, I should say. Coming down, these headers are double skinned, so theoretically they will never blue. The outside of them will never blue. And you can see the catalytic converter underneath there. Come around the front, nice big radiator. It does take away from the classic lines of the bike a little bit, but in saying that, it makes the bike much more efficient and obviously the horsepower is crazy. Front headlight, LED, very bright at night. Coming down to the front wheels, double disc brakes on the front, single on the rear. LED indicators, let's come up onto the dashboard so we can see a nice double analog dials, RPM on the right, speedo on the left and in the center there I'll show you in a photo there's actually an LED screen with a whole bunch of information. Um, handlebars, we've got high beam, low beam, the computer select, we've got horn, indicators, hazards on the right hand side, just on, off, and start. Coming down to the tank, a nice Z on the front of the tank there, looks really good. Obviously the Jaffa colour is just absolutely amazing, I love it. Coming down to the seat, let's come around the other side so we've got better light. So the seat's a nice two-up seat, really comfy, very wide, um, obviously classic styled but suitably uh, useful for this bike. Got nice tie-down hooks here and another hook space here if you need to tie anything down. Very nice and the colour scheme comes over onto the rear cowl here. Comparing it to the Z900 RS Cafe, you can see that this one's got a cowl on the front, which, um, which gives it that little cafe look. The handlebars are a little bit lower than the Z900 RS, gives you more of a racy feel. Coming down, other than that, the pegs are slightly more rear set. Maybe, maybe not. Looking at both, I'm not real sure now. Um, you can see the single rear shock in there. And this one's got an aftermarket header and exhaust on it. Makes the sound amazing, it also lets the bike breathe a lot better. It's still got the standard cans on the end though. Also with a little tail tidy on the back, uh, you can see how um, by removing, removing the rear mudguard, it just makes the bike look a little bit fatter at the back, makes it look really nice. And also the bar end mirrors on here which are also an aftermarket add-on. And Winston, of course, Winston for the Black Dog Ride, he's also an aftermarket add-on too.
throttlers. Now, we are on the Z900 RS. Now that's the RS cafe in front of us that James is on. But we're on the standard RS. And we're doing a nice little recce trip of Black Dog Penrith Ride. And uh, while we're doing the recce, um, to find out some great little filming spots to sit, uh, well, I'm also going to be test riding and reviewing this Z900 RS, the Jaffa colour. Now, this is possibly the best looking bike on the market right now, in my opinion. It's classic styled, it's got this beautiful Jaffa colour scheme. It's a comfortable upright seated position bike and everything about it is modern except for that classic look. All of the technology is modern, it's got a nice cooling system, more power than you could ever want, but she looks classic and I love it. Now the bike just up ahead that James is on is the cafe version and uh, there's a review that I did of that I'll pop it up onto the top of the screen right now, somewhere around about here, and uh, it'll also be in the description below. Um, but essentially, the cafe version of this is mechanically the same. The only difference is it's uh, lower handlebars. I think the pegs are set back a little bit further, and obviously it's got the cafe cowling. And James is slowly customising this bike. He's already done the exhaust, bar and mirrors. And you can see that um, Winston the Black Dog is on the, uh, the tank of the cafe. So let's talk about the bike to start with. Now I've only just jumped on it. And this is the first time on this bike and I've been on it for less than five minutes. And it's actually everything that I would want it to be. It's the upright seating position with a very, very slight forward lean. very very comfortable it's the sort of bike you could literally spend hours and hours on uh, and still be comfortable at the end of the day and the peak position uh, <coughs> is in a really comfortable position they're tucked up just a little bit uh, but certainly in a, in a, in a position where um, you're not at all feeling like you're on a crotch rocket, like it's just, a, you know, very similar to the seating position of a, um, of a Triumph Bonneville, I guess. Uh, maybe a little bit racier than that. Handlebars. There's, there's a bit of a rise to the handlebars, and, uh, and they're wide. And I really like that. When you're, especially in city riding, and urban riding, to have that wide handlebar gives you such a strong steering response. The only downside is, if you were to put bar end mirrors on the end of these handlebars, like James has on his cafe, I would think that it would make it very, very wide for lane filtering in heavy traffic. Just something to, to be considerate of. Um, Bear in mind when you when you are planning on this bike, and no doubt you'll customise it. Uh, the bar and mirrors will make the bike very wide. All right, we're in sixth gear now, cruising along nicely at 80, um, as you as you would expect. Um, Kawasaki's, uh, uh, in in my opinion, one of the top few bikes built at the moment these days and uh, no buzzing at all. Acceleration winds on really nicely, even in six gear. Plenty of torque. Beautiful morning for a ride out here today. Um, just a reminder, this is a Black Dog Recce, so we're just going out to do the Black Dog course. James is actually a, um, 
the head of the corner markers on the day so he's going to be heading out ahead of everyone and putting people on to the corners to make sure no one gets lost to guide people in the right direction so uh so for james this little day is about finding his corners and for me it's about finding a cool little location where i can set up my cameras and uh and get some nice footage of all the black doggers as they ride past now we're looking at possibly getting around about 700 or more bikes this year um, between 700 and a thousand and that's absolutely amazing to come out on this ride uh, with a whole group of like-minded people raising awareness and money for black dog uh, suicide prevention depression uh, mental health in general uh, a great cause and, uh, and something that if you're a rider um, and you're anywhere in Australia you could be involved with this coming up on uh, March 17 from memory so make sure you check it out this is something that not only is it for a good cause but it's going to be a whole heap of fun cruising around with 700 other bikes coming back to the Z900 RS now it's as we're doing this long sweeping corner we're only sitting on 80 it's pretty heavily speed limited around these areas and we don't want to do the wrong thing but it's just comfortable leaning into corners it's very predictable very directional um, this road has got a few undulations on it it's not a rough road but it's not a smooth road as well um, and the bikes just cruising over all these undulations really easy and uh, very very comfortably indeed I often get asked about wind buffeting on the uh, naked bikes like this is. There's no fairing at all in front of us. Um, and on this bike in particular, you can feel wind on your chest as you would expect, but there's no buffering at all. It's just, just the normal wind of traveling at this sort of a speed. And in fact, it's probably even a little bit reduced as we're punching our way through the wind as well. So yeah, not uncomfortable. I think you can comfortably sit on 110, 120 all day and not really be fatigued by the wind at all. My helmet's not moving around from the wind. I can just feel the wind on my chest and that's all. Um, but because of my body positioning, um, I'm kind of leaning into it a little bit and it's just making it really comfortable. Just to make a little comparison, uh, I, reminding that I actually have written this in a review, um, but to make a little comparison between this and the Z900 RS. Now, already, I can feel that there's, I'm leaning forward obviously a lot more. We've got these clip-ons, I don't think they're clip-ons, but they're a lower bar, maybe a Clubman style bar. I'm in a more racy riding position, uh, without a doubt. And surprisingly, and I didn't think this was the case when I first rode this bike, but in comparison to the Z900 RS, this fairing does do a good little job. It's not too bad at all. Now these bar end mirrors that he's got on here, it's just taking me a little while to get used to. Um, the, the visibility is a lot less than with the standard mirrors. So um, that's actually something that I've got to consider when I get my new bike too, whether I want to go down that angle or not. Now bear in mind that this exhaust on here is an aftermarket exhaust like we talked about. Uh, it does sound good. Uh, yeah, it sounds good. Um, you probably can't even pick it up on this little microphone in my helmet, but yeah, it sounds really nice certainly something you would do if you buy this bike or the Z900 RS you certainly put the exhaust on uh, to perk it up a lot and you can feel how much it's breathing more like it really is it really does make a difference I think that would be money well spent
Now, if you're wondering what this little dog is sitting on my fuel tank, this is Winston. Winston's the mascot for the Black Dog Ride. And on the Black Dog Ride, you'll see the majority of the bikes with Winston somewhere strapped to their bike. And uh, I've ordered one too. Hopefully I'll have a little Winston ready in time for the day as well. Which do I prefer? The Z900 RS or the Z900 RS Cafe? Look, I really think that if I was to buy one of these bikes, I'd be buying the Z900 RS, the Jaffa that I was just on previously. Um, for me personally, I like the upright seating position. Um, I just think it's, uh, it's a better bike that would suit me on a longer ride as well. But if you wanted a more sporty experience, the cafe is the one you'd have to go for. It's really comfortable in a sporty position. It's um, it's not so sporty like a uh, like a Kawasaki uh, Ninja, uh, like the Z1000. It's not that harsh. It's definitely somewhere in the middle of a standard bike and a sports bike. But if you're after fun, maybe track days, yeah, you'd be definitely going in the cafe. But me personally, I'm still leaning towards the Jaffa. I think the colour scheme is beautiful. Uh, really harks back to that original bike that it was uh, that it was planned from. Uh, I'll flash a, a picture of, on the screen of the original bike back in the 70s. And uh, yeah, it, the Jaffa the Jaffa would be my my choice absolutely still. But this is awesome. This is absolutely fun. All right, we've just gotten back. It's been about an hour and a half, two hours in the saddle of this little beauty. And uh, I can honestly say that it's as good as the cafe. Um, in my opinion, for my needs, I think it's better than the cafe. I love the upright seating position. Uh, I love the comfortability of it. And it's still got as much horsepower and, uh, and as much fun as the Z900 RS cafe is. Now, what would I do to modify this if I was to buy it? Definitely an exhaust like James has done to the cafe. An exhaust through, number one, it lets it breathe better, gives you a bit more power and response, uh, and, and, and it just frees up the, um, the, the bike a lot and lets it stretch its legs a little bit more. Other than that, um, I wasn't a big fan of the bar end mirrors uh, on the cafe. However, um, I think it would just be a matter of getting used to it. It's something that I'm just not used to at the moment. Would I buy this? Well, yeah, absolutely. This is something that I would buy. I've just ordered a different style of bike, um, but this is certainly a bike that I would buy without hesitation. Now, if, you've got, if you're interested in the Z900 RS, come on down here to Penrith Motorcycle Centre. This is a demo bike right now. It's ready for you to take for a test drive. Give the boys a call and uh, tell them Rob from Throttle Down Under sent you and uh, take it out for a bit of fun and, uh, and you'll understand how much I love it. Anyway, guys, throttle on. See you on the next video.